Can you tell me, please? Shall we start with the class? Are you all ready there? Yes, <clears throat> we will start the class now. I hope the screen uh, is visible and the audio is also uh, uh, you are you you are able to listen to the audio. Okay, fine. Then let's start the class. Yes. Today, uh, as I said, we are going to continue with the operators, right? And in the operators, I'm going to teach you these op operators that is bitwise operator, pointer related, structure related, the updation operators, that is increment and decrement, and then the compound assignment operators. Okay. Now let's uh, start with <coughs> the uh, increment and decrement operators allow program to illustrate the working of updation operators okay ash include stdio.h now the students i want you people to <coughs> observe the program carefully what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some three variables, say i equals 10, j equals 0, <coughs> and k equals 5. Some three variables I have taken. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, in these three variables, what I'm going to do is, uh, we are going to, you know, use that plus plus minus minus operators in <coughs> different ways. Okay. Now what I will say i plus plus okay now what I'll do I'll print the values i equals percentage d j equals percentage d okay <clears throat> okay and uh, k equals percentage d okay i comma j comma k this is what we are going to do now as usual we'll use two slash okay we'll give a name to this <coughs> updation operators dot c okay that's the name of the uh, program now i hope you are trying to <coughs> concentrate here okay What did I do? I post incremented I. Post incremented I. That's what uh, you know roughly we can say. So here I we have incremented the J and K they are not dubbed. Correct. Okay, so I incremented value would be 11, then 0, then 5. These will be the values. Isn't it? Let's check it. Run it. Yes. Run it. Uh, you should get an output. Okay. Can you check it? I equals 11, J equals 5, uh, J equals 0, K equals 5. Okay. 
I hope you have understood. Now what I'll do? Plus plus i. Okay. Then again, again uh, I'm going to print the values of i, j, k. Now please uh, note that I have again incremented i. But this time I have pre-incremented i. But then uh, what is the difference between the two? Is there any difference between the C? <clears throat> there is definitely some difference between the two. But since they are individual statements or say individual expression, we are not doing anything other than the increment here. Okay, in the first case also, I'm just incrementing i. In the second case also, I'm just incrementing i. So we are not able to see the difference. Carry forward the values, please. Carry forward the values. i becomes 12 now. Okay, j and k are not disturbed. So you can see the output as 12, 0, and 5. Let's check it. Can you see that? Okay, i equals 12, j equals 0, k equals 5. Okay. Now, we have to know the difference between pre and post, okay. For that, we have to do something else other than the increment decrementing also. So, what I'll do, observe here, I'll say j equals k plus plus. Now, what did I do? What did I do? It is post, post increment. Post means, we are, it is telling other things first and at the last increment. Are we doing anything other than incrementing? Yes. We are assigning the value of j, uh, sorry, k to j. Okay. So here, first you have to give the value of k to j. Okay. Right. So what happens here? Uh, observe. <coughs> j equals. k plus correct okay this is what we are doing <clears throat> just a minute okay now the value of k you have to assign to j first so what is the value of k it is 5, correct? Okay, see, see it? Value of k is 5. Value of j is 0. Okay, I hope you are trying to uh, understand this. Okay, so first uh, what you have to do is the value of j you have to store it in uh, for value of k you have to store it in j first. Okay, right? And then increment k okay right i hope you are trying to understand so this has to happen first okay and the incrementation has to happen lastly okay the second step first step is to assign second uh increment why because it is post okay so what is the value of k so what will be the value of j phi now, after assigning, what will the value of k? 6. Okay. Right. So, let's uh, try this. So, here the value of uh, i is not disturbed. Okay. j value will be 5 and k value will be 6. Okay. Run this. I'm sorry. <coughs> I hope uh, you have understood this. Right. Okay. Okay, fine. Now, next, I'll say i equals minus minus k. Okay, i, I equals minus minus k. Okay, now what happens here? Let's see. Let's see. Okay, i equals minus minus k. Are you following this? Okay, all right. So here, what we have to do is first decrement the value of k. 
first decrement the value of k okay right so what was the value of k what was the value of k it was 6 it was 6 okay now the decremented value later you assign it to i so what will be the value of i what will, what was the value of k earlier 6 now it has become 5 correct now it has become 5 this 5 is assigned to i also isn't it right k is first decremented and then assigned to i so what we are trying to say here is see when we say post we are telling do it at the last at the end of the stored statement minus minus means do it at the very beginning don't say anything else do it you know do the decrementation first here do the decrementation at the end of the statement so you can so now here you can understand that plus plus has the i mean uh, post increment or post decrement has the very least prints than assignment actually assignment uh, operator has is one of the operators having very less precedence okay so less precedence than assignment is post increment or post decrement okay then wow you know one of the operators uh, which has the highest priority is minus minus okay right so you should not do anything else but first do the pre decrement or pre increment i hope you have understood so now let's try to run this <clears throat> run it and as you can see i equals 5 j equals 5 k equals 5 okay now here it is 555 how it happened 555 please note j was already 5 now k was 6 k we decremented so it became 5 later we add it to i come back to this come back to this the line number 13 what we did first we assigned the value of k to j then we incremented k okay i hope you have understood the behavior or say how the plus plus post increment and post and pre uh, increment decrement operators work okay all right okay <clears throat> any doubt you can ask me in the chat okay fine let's continue now now the next uh, <clears throat> so next program program to illustrate short circuiting okay to illustrate short circuiting so here what we will do again same thing we'll take some three variables say x equals 2 y equals 5 and z equals 10 okay right <clears throat> okay i hope you uh, have taken down that previous program yeah though it was be easy okay right okay fine no doubt that's good fine now let's uh, next we will uh, learn short circuiting what is short circuiting now for we to understand what is short circuiting you must know the <coughs> truth tables i am sure everyone of you uh, know the truth table say uh if this is uh x and uh, this is y and this is uh, x and y all right and this is x or y okay now come on 0 0 so 
so what is here <coughs> x and y it is zero x or y it is zero <coughs> x is false zero means false okay that you know i okay i hope you know all this okay it's very easy okay right and this is one so this is zero this is one this is one this is zero this is zero this is one this is one one this is true and this is also true so i know you people know this isn't it okay fine so now next uh, what you have to do here is this is you know i know you people know this fine but I, how many of you have observed these things that i'm going to tell you now observe here in the case of and when the very first uh, truth value is uh, zero is there any use of checking the second truth value observe again in the case of and okay in the case of and in the case of and when the very first uh, statement is false is there any use of going and uh, uh, solving the second expression no no not at all we can directly jump to the conclusion and say false not just that in the case of or in the case of or when the very first statement is true, is there any use of going and checking the second statement? Not at all. When the very first statement is true, we can directly jump to the conclusion that it is true. Okay. This is the observation that you have to do. Okay. Right. Okay. Fine. I hope you have understood what I said now. Okay. Now let's continue <coughs> with that. If x plus plus is less than or equal to <clears throat> 2 or I'm sorry hmm yeah let it be like this and y minus minus is less than or equal less than z okay then what i'll do print f i'll say uh tirupati and uh, put s shri kala hasti okay okay <clears throat> else I'll say put s um, Vijayanagaram, okay, right, and Shri Kakulam, okay fine and then i will say print f <coughs> i equals percentage d j equals percentage d k equals percentage d oh it is not i j k it is x y z okay <coughs> okay Now, I want you people to uh, go through this program and, uh, uh, you know, uh, give me the answer, okay? Uh, please take the answer uh, uh, from at least two students, uh, which are different, okay? Uh, please ask the uh, students to solve this and uh, let them give me the answer. And let them take the help of what I have taught here, okay? What I have taught here, okay? right so i want uh, the students to give the and in the chat i want uh, two different answers i mean uh, two answers which might be different from the students to be written there in the chat
Yes, yes. X comma Y comma Z. Okay, fine. Now you please tell me the uh, what will be the output. Is it Tirupati Shri Kalahasti or Vijayanagaram and Shrikakolam? Which of the two? And then tell me what will be the values of X, Y, Z. Okay, that is what you have to tell me. Okay, Tirupati and Shri Kalahasti, what will be the values of X, Y, Z? x equals 3, y equals 4, z equals 10. Okay. x equals 3, y equals 4, z equals 10. That is what the answer that I am getting. Now, let's check. Let's check. Please note here, since it is <coughs> post incrementation, since it is post incrementation, I told you that if you are doing anything other than the increment, let's do the other thing first okay not the increment so what is the other thing that you have to do here you have to compare you have to compare the value of x with uh, x less than or equal to 2 so that is 2 less than or equal to 2 2 is less than or not less but it is equal to so the condition is true please note the condition is true so when the condition come here the when the condition is true in the case of r what did i say you can directly jump to the conclusion no need to check the second sign. That means to say the control will not come here. Will definitely not come there. The reason is even if the goes there, it is useless. There is no use of checking, isn't it? Okay. So what uh, the uh, what happens? The can never go here. So this condition is never checked, and also that means to say y is never decremented. Y value is same. It it, it will remain the same. However, the control came here. The control came here. So, x will be incremented by the time the control comes inside the body of the if condition. Okay. Don't say if loop. If is not loop. It is condition. So, x less than or equal to 2. That is 2 less than or equal to 2 is true and the control will come inside. As soon as the control has come inside, x value has incremented. So, x has become 3. So, Tirupati and Shri Kalas is printed and x is printed as 3 y 5 z 10. Okay, so let's check it. Okay, did you understand? Okay, I hope you have uh, tried to understand this. Okay, fine. Now let's uh, change the values. Let's change the values. I'll change x to 10 and z to 0 and here I am going to change the condition say <clears throat> um, y less than or equal to um, ok y is, it, is equal to minus minus x and um, y plus plus not equal to z uh, plus plus z okay right <clears throat> now we will uh, change the okay yeah now uh, what will be the output now what will be the output i hope you will not do wrong now you will not go wrong now okay 
observe that i want you to type the type here yes i want you to type here what the output now Okay. So x equals nine, y equals five, z equals zero. <clears throat> Let's check. <clears throat> Here, please note x. We are pre-decrementing it. So decrement it first. Don't say anything else. Decrement it first. So x becomes nine. Y, that is five. Is it equal to nine? No. Condition fails. So is it required to go and check condition? Not at all. In the case of and, when the first statement is zero, that is false. No need of going and checking the second. So the con the control will never come here. Okay, right. So now it will come to Vijayanagaram. Uh, I mean to the else part, and it will print. And then only the x value is changed. That is, x has become nine. Y is five and Z is zero. Okay, right? I hope you have understood. Okay, now one question to you people. Okay, which is most important? How is that you people are going to use short circuiting? Now you know what is short circuiting. What is short circuiting? In the case of or, when the first condition is true, the second will not be checked. Second or third or fourth. Okay, any number of when the very first statement is true okay the rest of the statements will never be checked in the case of and when the very first statement is false the rest of the statement uh, conditions will never be checked that is short circuiting now my question to you people is how is that you go you you are going to use the short circuiting please do answer to my question Yes, can someone answer? Okay, I will give you the clue. We have to put the statements. We have to arrange the conditions in such a way that we will we can save the time. We can save the time. Okay, right. So that's the clue. We have to arrange the statements in such a way that in an in an order. Okay. Uh, so that it will save the time. Now you tell me, how do you arrange the conditions when it is or, or and how do you arrange the status and? Okay, <clears throat> I will explain you. Please note, we will, in the case of, yeah, I'll write it here. Short circuiting. In the case of or, we <clears throat> must place the condition, we must place the 
first condition which is most likely to be true so that rest of the statements are not checked okay okay in the case of and now you know now you can easily understand in the case of and we must place the first condition which is most likely to be false so that rest of the statements are not checked so by this we can save the time isn't it okay right see <clears throat> this is what the engineers do okay this is what the programmers must do while they are writing the code they should not simply oh i have to check uh, three conditions so uh, check the three conditions condition one or condition two or condition three okay our job done come on next it's not like that it's never like that okay an engineer who's an engineer in, an engineer is one who has the capabilities to innovate who has the capabilities to think deeper okay so if you don't think deep so then there cannot be something better and better okay right so please note this this is very very important okay uh, short circuiting i have explained you now let's go to the bitwise operators okay now bitwise operators will learn it using uh, programs uh, pro using a program itself i hope i have taken down this program okay fine so then uh, i'll going to delete this a program to create the working of bitwise operators okay a program to illustrate bitwise operators the working of bitwise operators what are all the bitwise operators please note the bitwise operators are bitwise or a single pipe bitwise and okay right shift left shift and xor that is cap these five bitwise operators they are all binary operators that means to say they need two operands okay and then and lastly we have one's complement uh, which is uh, <coughs> uh, which is a unary operator okay all right now let's begin the one i will do here is i'll take the value of uh, x as say 30 and value of uh, y as 9 okay okay as we know the size of x is 4 bytes that is 32 bits the size of y and z is also uh, 4 bytes that is 32 bit only for the sake of ease of understanding <clears throat> only for solving this program easily will assume they are all of they all these three variables all are of one byte okay right i hope you are understanding okay one byte means it is 8 bits correct okay right okay so it is 8 bits now what is the value of the uh, 30 means uh, what it is 30 means uh, mm, 30 i will write here this is 8 okay yeah this is 8 uh 16 correct 16 plus 8 is 24 24 plus 4 is 28 28 plus 2 is 30 so it is double one double one zero okay so zero comes here 1 1 1 1 correct so this is what 30 is okay right so what is this this is x correct okay x is 30 y is 9 9 is uh, it's very simple <clears throat> 9 is 
zero 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 one zero zero one. Correct? Okay. <clears throat> right. So this is y. <clears throat> I hope you are trying to understand. Now let's take z. Okay. Right. Now first we will do z equals okay x or y is it clear okay x or y so start from the lsb please note this is lsb bit it is <coughs> i'm sorry <coughs> this is <coughs> lsb bit that is least significant bit and the leftmost is the msb right that is the leftmost that is most significant bit okay now begin 1 0 0 or 1 1 1 or 0 1 1 or 0 1 1 or 1 or 1 1 1 and 0 1 now this is 0 0 0 okay are you following so what is triple uh, triple 1 double 1 that is 31 okay so now we'll do it z equals x or y then we'll print the value of x equals percentage d comma y equals percentage d comma z equals percentage d okay so here we will say x comma y comma z okay right Okay, fine. So now let's run this. As you can see, x is 30, y is 9, and z is 31. Okay, I hope you have understood this. Okay, now next. Now we will do x and y. Okay, x and y. Okay, right. So let's do x and y. Come here. Remove all the bits. Okay, start doing from the LSB. 0 and 1, 0. 1 and 0, 0. 1 and 0, 0. 1 and 1, 1. 1 and 0, 0. 0 and 0, 0. 0 and 0, 0. 0 and 0, 0. Okay, you have to do it for all the bits. All the 32 bits you have to do. Okay. Right, so 32 bits it takes too much of time for us, so I have taken only bits. Okay, so what is the what is the value you got? Eight. Okay, Z and Y. Z and Y is eight. I hope you are trying to understand. Okay, any doubt you can ask me in the chat. Okay, run this. So now you can see that Z now is eight. Z is eight now. Okay, right, fine. Now let's uh, do uh, right shift. Z equals x right shift 2. Okay, right. Okay, what is that we have to do now? I'll tell you. Come, come here. Now this x right shift 2. Right shift means shift all the bits to the right. Now, for me to shift the MSB bit, <clears throat> so this bit here it should be empty. Correct. Now you students are you are all sitting on the bench on the chairs for one person to shift the next chair should be empty. But there string. Okay. Now we have to to shift this. This should to shift this. This should be empty. So like that to shift this this should be empty so what we will do we will first remove this bit we will first remove this bit are you following so the lsb bit will be removed so so one 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 comes here okay so once if i do right shift on z okay so it will be like this and this because this bit is now empty the msb bit is now empty why because we have right shifted the bits 
of x so now <clears throat> we have like okay in the empty bit add zero please note always in the empty bit you have to add zero now how many times we did the right shift once but in the statement here how many times we have to right shift twice so do it once again okay please note the x value is not disturbed only the right shift of x okay right we are doing it twice now so what happens again this one is removed so this one is <clears throat> one shifted correct so this one is shifted here and uh, the fourth bit one is shifted to third bit like this this bit becomes zero so the msb again becomes zero i'm sorry it, it is empty now it is empty after doing the right shift it is empty so what we have to do that add zero okay right i hope you have tried to understand so here i think this one comes here one one zero okay so after doing the right shift twice what you have now okay this is what you have now i hope you are trying to understand this okay right so this zero is gone so one 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 we have okay okay in the second nibble okay then again that one is removed from the lsb so in the second nibble we have zero one 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 so what is the value of uh, z now seven seven x value will be 30 itself okay now let's run this so x value is 30 y is 9 z is 7 can you see that z is okay now next <clears throat> we will do right shift okay okay now we will do right shift uh, left shift on y okay three times you can do if you wish okay right three times two times only one time whatever you wish okay so what we are doing y left shift three so what we have to do on the left so this bit will go you know will fall down now this bit so now the empty bit will be on lsb lsb will be the empty correct so this 1001 you have to shift it thrice so this one comes one two three so this comes here one one zero zero one so these two bits will become zero correct now how many times uh, we did it okay <clears throat> hope you have tried to understand one zero zero one so one will come here and this will be zero okay so three times we have shifted and on the right right side that is on the lsb we get the empty bit correct we get the empty bit there we have stored zeros now what is the value new value so this is uh, here uh, one means 128 this is 64 64 plus 8 is 72 now let's try let's try to run this see z equals 72 i hope you have understood right i hope you have understood okay now one thing something new i am going to teach you uh, you have to pay attention please pay attention all of you now see here whenever whenever i have a number okay and the msb is 1 msb is 1 okay okay say the msb is 1 and uh, come back here what is the data type int by default what are all the things hidden here auto what else is hidden here signed by default all the integers they can store negative numbers they can store negative numbers okay if you want it to store only positive number then you have to make it unsigned correct you have to make it unsigned so that x can store only positive numbers but by default 
it will be signed by default it will be signed mean to say it can store negative numbers also okay here x comma y comma z are by default signed signed it okay so they can store negative numbers also they can store negative numbers also okay i hope you are uh, trying to understand this okay so now come on come here say when when the msb is 1 in the case of signed integer please note <clears throat> in the case of sign and when the msb that is most significant bit is 1 then the number stored in the variable is negative okay the msb in the case of signed int in the case of signed int okay works like signed bit works as signed bit okay right works as signed bit if it is one then the number is negative if the msb is zero then the number is positive i hope you have understood this okay right i hope you have understood this okay so come again in the case of signed end when the msb is one then the number stored in the variable is negative okay the msb in the case of signed end works like signed bit works as signed bit if the msb is one then the number stored in the variable is negative if the msb is zero then the number is positive okay keep this in mind okay fine so let's continue now what i'll do observe there Now what I'll do, z equals one's complement of y. Okay, z equals one's complement of y. So let's do it. Come back. What it is? Z equals one's complement of y. Okay. Okay. Now uh, before that, what is the value stored here? Let's check. What is the value stored here? Let's check. So one is in msb so let us assume it is signed in let us assume it is signed in let us assume it is signed in so it, you should take minus 1 into 2 power 7 correct see this power is 0 this lsb bit power is 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay and all others you should take plus so plus 0 into 2 power 6 plus 0 into 2 power 5 correct no for this one this one again 0 0 into anything is 0 that we know so no need of you know calculating all this only calculate for this okay, okay. 1 into 1 into 2 power 1 now what is this what is this minus 1 into 2 power 7 is minus 128 plus 1 into 2 power 1 is 2 equals minus 126 so please note the number stored here is minus 126 okay did you understand okay right okay now uh, in other words in other words wait we'll do one thing i'll take a variable int i equals minus 126 so how minus 126 is stored in memory i'll i'm going to show you okay right okay now pay attention in minus 126 just take the number please note 
the negative numbers are stored as two's complement of the number so take the two's complement of take two's complement of 126 and store it in memory so how negative numbers are stored in memory the two's complement of the number is taken and it is stored so what is 126 126 uh, uh, put it in uh, uh, put it in uh, binary uh, though it is little difficult let's try it uh, this is uh, this is 8 16 32 64 okay 64 64 plus 32 64 plus 32 is uh, 64 plus 32 is 96 correct 96 plus 1 uh, sorry 96 plus uh, 16 correct 96 plus 16 is comma 112 okay 112 plus 8 112 plus 8 120 120 plus 4 124 okay right so this is how it is stored so 126 is stored like this so in binary now take the two's complement of this come on how to take the two's complement take the one's complement first okay do it one how many ones are there one two three four six okay one two three four five six one <clears throat> so this is one's complement now what is the two's complement of 126 very simple one one two three four five one zero okay now now see here now see it match it with what is there in this block okay right so this is minus 126 okay so how negative numbers are stored in uh, memory the negative numbers are stored in memory in c c plus plus java and many many languages is the two's complement of the number is taken say i want to store minus 126 take 126 take its two's complement store it okay that is how it is too all right and when you do so please note what is that you have to notice when you are storing a negative number in memory the msb must be one compulsorily it will be one okay right okay if you are trying to store negative number how do you how do you store the negative number you have taken the <coughs> binary equivalent and uh, you have taken two's complement of the number and you are storing but if you do get uh, msb as one so you have done something wrong in the calculation okay right <clears throat> okay fine so now come to this come to the program now what is the program z equals uh, z equals not of y okay what is y now let's go and check what is y why we have taken 1001 okay that is 9 okay right okay why is here that is equal to 9 x we have taken it as 30 okay now z equals one's complement simply why you know complement uh, the this will be 1 1 1 0 1 1 uh, 0 correct no isn't it right so now did you observe there the msb is one the msb is one so z value should be something negative z value should be negative what it is let's check so this is minus one into two power into two power seven plus one into okay two power six plus Please note the negative should be only to the MSB. Okay, 1 into 2 power 5. Correct, no? And it goes like that. So I will directly write the numbers. So this is minus 128 of the MSB. Okay, the seventh bit will be plus 64. Okay, the sixth bit will be 32. Fifth bit will be 16. 0, so leave it. And next is 6. Okay, 110 is 6. Okay, now calculate this minus 124 plus 64 is minus 64. 
plus 32 plus 16 is 48 48 plus 6 is 54 that is equal to minus 10 okay right so it is equal to minus 10 so let's check it let's check here as you can see x equals 30 y equals 9 z equals minus 10 okay right so you have to sit and practice this program and then you can understand all of the bitwise operators okay the bitwise operations they have lot of uh, applications okay if uh, if if time is permissible i am going to teach you a few of them okay uh, for time being i hope you you have understood this program okay. right please note you have to practice the program now let's continue for another five minutes now uh, let's learn compound assignment operators okay let's take the same values i'm going to remove this program okay i'll see if you have put anything on the chat okay nothing is there on the chat so i hope uh, there is no doubt okay fine i have deleted it okay now what i'll do x plus plus it will increment x only once so x value will be 31 now i want to increment it by 2 so what you can do x equals x plus 2 okay now there is one more way of saying this you can say that i i want to increment 2 to itself i want to increment 2 to the same variable so what you can say plus equals 2 okay please note there should be no space between plus and equals otherwise it will be a compile time error okay see there is an error there okay so you have you should not give a space between plus and equals x plus equals 2 is nothing but what x equals x plus 2 okay okay right okay fine now this compound assignment operators you can use it with any of the arithmetic operators sometimes you can even use it with relational operators okay right but you should not do it you should not do it because here take for example here the compiler is in, uh, in it is in confusion whether i should consider this as x less than or equal to 8 okay or i should consider this as x equals x less than 8 okay right so here the compiler will be in a confusion so please note use the compound assignment operators only with uh, only with arithmetic operators okay and preferably you should use it only with uh, plus and minus okay right okay so that's the good coding practice uh, rule it says that use the uh, compound assignment operator only with plus or minus <clears throat> okay however this is also fine okay so if you want to check what will be the value of x x equals so x equals x plus 2 what it will be x value will be 32 correct let's check it yes x value is 32 as you can see okay now what will be the value of x uh, here what did we say what did we say x <coughs> equals x divided by 3 so x is 32 divided by 3 is 10 so it will be 10.66666 but as we know x is an integer variable so it can store only integers so that point decimal part will be truncated decimal part will be truncated there will be no round off all please note there will be no round off also okay so what will the value of x now 10 okay okay x is 10 i hope you have understood the uh compound assignment operators okay so now that's it for the day <coughs> we have learned today the bitwise operator 
okay and then uh, compound assignment and then uh, the optation operators okay uh, these two that is uh, pointer related and structure related will be yes so today we could not uh, complete the portions no problem no problem but we have learnt uh, many other things like short circuiting which is a most important concept okay and i have told you uh, how the negative numbers are stored okay that is a two's complement of the number is stored correct okay and you have learnt about msb lsb okay and then uh, uh, how short circuiting should be used in uh, real life so all that you have learned uh, tomorrow what we are going to do tomorrow i will be little fast okay in the operators i'm just i'm going to tell you the pointer related it is of not so much significant the reason is anyhow we are going to learn pointers and structures later okay pointer related and uh, structure related okay please note uh, from tomorrow onwards our second level will start okay so today was the sixth class today was the sixth class of our c programming okay that is approximately first one third one third okay totally 20 class okay uh, six means approximately it is one third so next one third will be the level the last one third will be the level three so you have already crossed today the first level of our training okay so tomorrow what is that you are going to learn i'm going to you know the operate uh, this I'll finish it off in because it has not much to do with nested if else uh, we will solve some programs and I'll give you some assignments okay some uh, five to six uh, programs is what we are going to solve there in that only two or three I'm going to do and uh, switch case I'm going to take uh, two or three programs in that only one I'm going to take it as an example and loops we are going to solve around uh, seven to I mean eight to ten 8 to 10 in that again i'll try you know i, I will only so only two or three programs for you okay right and if time is permissible uh okay fine let us let us keep it only so much okay so this will be the tomorrow's uh, content for you okay right i hope all of you have enjoyed the enjoyed today's class come again what we have learned today we learned uh, the uh, bitwise operators updation operators compound assignment operators in that you have learned short circuiting how to use short circuiting and then how negative numbers are stored in memory okay right any doubt you please uh, ask me right now okay or it is better if you send me the doubts in the uh, mail okay thank you all of you let's meet tomorrow by 10 o'clock sharp Okay, I'm winding up the class now. I'm winding up the class. Thank you all.